Your country needs you to stay on your couch and order in. Do your part and we'll do ours. Order through the Burger King app and the delivery fees are on us. So staying home doesn't just make us all safer, it makes you a couch patriot. And to help healthcare heroes, we are donating Whopper sandwiches to nurses. And we are also proudly supporting the American Nurses Foundation. Stay home of the Whopper. And Doug. Give me your hand! I can save you! Lots of money with Liberty Mutual! We customize your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need! Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. The hell they gon' judge us Oh, he came from the bottom We ain't never had enough We was living life rough Now we good, now we straight, now we up Now we good, now we straight, now we up How the hell they gon' judge us Oh, he came from the bottom My name is Damian Cryer I'm Damon Prince's dad 48 years old I love life I have four sons One actually passed away in 2017 um, from a drowning at Lakeside Park here in Fort Wayne. Was, he was my oldest son, he's 30 now. Then I have my ten, my 11 year old son, Darian. Then I have a son named Mykeen. Um, then my son, Damon. What's good, man? It's your boy, Damian, man. The doctor told my mom to have an abortion. The doctor said, you might as well just basically don't have this baby. My mom said, why? They said, because your son, he's going to be born without a spine. My mom said, I'm not killing my baby. And then my mom ended up having me, and I ended up having a spine. So the doctor was wrong. So I've been getting countered out since before I came off the wounds. They just don't believe in the kid. They don't believe in you until it's too late. I was born and raised in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, I was the third out of ten kids. Um, I have an extremely big family. The upbringing of Damon was like how my upbringing was uh, incorporated with my husband now. I'm real loose. I hang out. I'm, I'm a family man. I'm a father. You know what I'm saying? I'm most of his life. Here since he was was a youngster sucking on the thumb. Yeah, he, mwah, mwah, mwah. that was Damon. You know, I used to laugh and like, Damon, get that thumb out your mouth. And you a boy, you know? So pretty much his life. Damon was always somebody, one of those kids with dreams of doing all kind of stuff. Um, not so much focused on school, but always talking about building a, building a hotel on the moon or something. So he was always coming up with different ideas. Um, painting shoes, trying to make his own clothes, uh, writing on shirts, um, different things like that. But he was always a good kid, though. Um, he just was always, every time he knocked on my bedroom door, he was always showing me something different, asking me if I thought it was a good idea or something. Every young kid, you know, want to test their parents, you know. And, and it came a time where it was, I knew it was coming a time he, they was going to test me. Not only Damon, it was his brother, you know. It was it was all of us together. And that night that, that uh, Damon got stabbed, it was an altercation between his brother and and my nephew. And when, it, when, it, when, when everything came about, you know. It was like a, it was like a bad winter storm that, that night, you know. Um, I was making hot wings. It was a typical night, you know, uh, different flavors because everybody wanted something different. Um, it was, my husband, that dude was over. You know, he was about maybe seven, eight, I don't know. But I guess he started something with my older son, which my older son was maybe 16, I guess. I can't remember, it's been so long ago. But anyway, um, it was a conflict with them too. And then my husband had, had said something because it was just so loud, I guess, I don't know, basically, my nephew and my son got into it. So there was a big commotion about my son and my husband now. Damon rushed downstairs to, to help his brother. And they uh, pretty much attacked me because I was, you know, 
I was finna discipline his brother, you know, you put your hands on a young, young, you, you know what I'm saying, your little cousin, and I gotta discipline you. But he was at that age, I knew they was about to test me. So that was the night the test came. And so Damien came out the room, and he was like, just instantly took his brother's side. And, and I guess that from that point on, it was, I guess when Damien in intervened, and my mom was over, and my sister, and so they all jumped my husband. And they all jumped him. Um, with, yeah, my mom, my sister, my two sons. And so at that point, um, my husband, he grabbed, he, he grabbed something. He, I, well, he went in the kitchen and grabbed something. He grabbed a pot and a pitchfork. And I guess, <clears throat> I guess he just, you know, he just threw it, you know, like, get off me type of stuff. And I guess that's how, you know, you know Damon got stabbed. I got a phone call. You know, it was almost like one of the worst calls that you ever want to get as a parent, you know. And um, he was just saying, um, he was like yelling and crying, and I could tell that something was wrong. He had to be about 14 or 15 years old. And he told me that he got stabbed, and there was police everywhere, and I freaked out. I don't, I didn't even clock out or tell nobody I was leaving the plant. I just left, jumped in my truck, and went over there. The time I got over there, there was police everywhere. Um, the boyfriend, I just wanted to just snatch his throat out of his head, but he kept running into the house and closing the door in my face. The police tried to take me to jail. So it was really devastating for me to get a call that my, stomach got, that my son had got stabbed. Everybody's trying to explain the situation and this and that and who fell on top of what, but I wasn't really trying to hear it. So it was a really devastating moment. He didn't get stabbed, he got poked. You know, we was tussling in the floor and you know, going back and forth and, and um, kind of got broken away somehow. And I had got a, it was a fork somewhere laying around there and I threw the fork and it hit Damon in the it hit him in his shoulder somewhere, and he like, oh, like, like he just been shot us, so, oh, you know. And then when it got ambulance, everybody came and, and went to the hospital, and he had like, like a band aid. So my stepdad, he said I just got poked. Why that nigga lying, bro? If I got poked, why did he go to jail? Like, why did he go to jail, bro? If I got poked, why you get locked up? Why, why you have to set bond to get bonded out? Why did we go to foster care, me and my brother? Like. If I got poked, why did it, why did it, why did they remove me out the house? Why did CPS get involved if I just got poked? What do you mean? Like, no, I got stabbed, bro. Like, I don't even know why he tried to water it down and make it seem like this. Like, I just got poked. If I got poked, I would have never been bleeding everywhere. And the ambulance whenever came and the police and all that. You feel me? I got stabbed, bro. And it was intentional. And that's how I feel about it. He goes to the hospital. He was locked up. He got, they got throwing the back of police car. That was the intention, he, you know, I guess. I guess that, that wasn't the intention, though, but, you know, you know, four people was jumping him, you know, so he was trying to, you know, defend himself. And I can't remember. I, actually, I do remember what I was doing. I, I was on the phone calling 911 because it, it just escalated. The situation escalated so, so bad. And 911 was called and Damon was sent out to on the, on the stretcher. But he tried to make it seem like, oh, you got stabbed. But it, it wasn't a stabbing situation. It was, you know, things that, that families go through. And my husband was like instantly arrested. You know, they arrested him instantly without listening to the story. It, I guess because you know, because he caused bodily harm at the time. It was just I didn't know what to think. I didn't know whose side to take. You know, I just was like I was like in the middle of it. I don't want to say the wrong thing, but it's you know still to this day right now. It's been a lot of years ago, and he's rekindled some of that relationship with the stepdad. But I, I mean, I'm going to always feel some type of way about that, always, and he knows it. You know, for some kids, it sticks with them. It was a bandage on my arm after the incident because I was bleeding everywhere. Like when the EMS came, they literally had to cut my shirt. You know what I'm saying? Just to get to my. It was a bandage over my arm because that's the that's the point in their life, like, you know, things are like changing. They got locked up. And after that, I didn't even go back to the crib. They placed us, placed me and my brother with my auntie. And then after that, they took us and they put us in a foster care facility. It wasn't a big deal, you know, it really wasn't. And after the foster care facility, they placed us in um, my auntie's uh, possession because she actually had her uh, foster license. And then we stayed with her. At the time, Damon went to the foster home um, I wanted him to stay with me, but during the time when I spoke with Juvenile, because of my past and the prisons and all that stuff, they wouldn't let me get him. So I felt some type of way. I did try to get him. I talked to CPS multiple times, and the only thing they could look at was my record and just, you know, 
So it was a herder because I have nothing against his auntie or nothing like that. But I knew back then, you know, that she was into like the rap thing and she was blowing up too and it was getting kind of wild. People they was hanging out with, I didn't want my son around them. So, you know, again, it was still devastating that he got stabbed and then he had to go stay with his auntie, which I really wasn't cool with. But. So, you know, we took whatever classes we had to, or, you know, actually we did visitations, you know, we, we, we cooperated with the courts. And so when we went to court, they asked Damon he want to come back home. You know, first he was kind of like, mm, no. And then his brother was like, look, it's better at home, you know, than, than the auntie house. And basically at the end of the day, um, they all came home. I felt, I felt bad, really bad about it. Like it was something that shouldn't have happened. You know, we got past it, you know, but every family goes through a trial and tribulation where kids want to be rebellious. When they came back, you know, we wanted things to be better, and and it, it really didn't get better. I don't know how he actually felt, but the way I felt, you know, I just wanted the best for him. It's so crazy because now that I'm older, even Marvin, like my mom and Marvin, they 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 like look at me like eye to eye now. Like they don't they don't talk to me like I'm just a little kid. But back then, I didn't like I didn't I, I I didn't think I was a little kid myself. Like I thought I had goals, dreams, and I had the vision, but they wasn't trying to hear me out. And they one of the things too, they didn't support my visions. Like they didn't support what I wanted to do. He became he became um a lot stronger. His his ego became a lot stronger because he didn't like people, you know, laughing at talking about. So he became a lot stronger, you know, with with with, with his personality. But uh, yeah, he was he was in between, just an adolescent of a kid, you know. A little, little soft on one side, and then when people start picking on him, then he, you know, he found himself, it's like, nah, ain't nobody picking on me. So, you know, he, he threw some of them punches back when he was growing up. I didn't have nothing. My family didn't have nothing. My mom had nine kids struggling, paycheck to paycheck. At the time, when I was younger, living with my mom, my dad, like I was in, like my dad was like kind of like in and out my life. I wasn't as close as my dad as I am now. And then when I when I did come around, my dad asked for money, and my dad said, "You gotta get a job." You know what I'm saying? But you a kid in high school, middle school, you don't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? I expect you know, hey dad, can I have some money? I expect him like here you go, but it wasn't like that. Wasn't easy, um, you know, um, in and out the system, trying to stay in their life, and um, having kids scattered out like that wasn't easy, but. There was always a question as of what one kid would ask, like, Damon, he thought that he didn't get enough attention from me. Then my other kids felt like that they didn't get enough attention from me. But I try to, it wasn't easy to balance it out. It was actually kind of hard, especially being that they were spread it out, so. I used to get a lot of referrals. I used to be late to class a lot. Fights, and then that led to getting kicked out. Getting smart with the teachers. Um, yeah, his school life was not, it was, it was rough for him. I think at high school, I think I got like 100, like 180 referrals or 200 referrals or something like that. But Dan was really in, engaged in school. It's just when he got in, in, in high school and got around other other kids, you know, he started to experience different different um, different people because we kind of we kept them, you know, a lot sheltered. You know, we didn't allow them to hang out with, with um, bad kids. If kids out there in the street pass, you know. Um, Seven, seven o'clock, you know, before the lights go out, you know, he couldn't hang out with those people. So we sheltered him from those people, but we didn't shelter to a point where he couldn't hang out with these, you know, those type of people, so. Me and him had a problem a lot with me having to go to the schools a lot and stuff, um, getting into trouble and stuff like that. Man, I, I ended up getting locked up at school too, like multiple times. But I think a lot of that stuff, it took place at the crib. We had a pretty good relationship as when he was a kid growing up. Just couldn't keep him out of trouble. Whatever went on at home, it kind of reflected on how I acted at school. Cause I felt like shit, if we arguing all the time, if I'm arguing with my parents all the time and they they adults, when I go to school, when I get around all these other kids, it's like, yo, if they get smart with me. I'm like, yo, I ain't about to talk to me crazy. The fuck? Cause I'm, I'm arguing with my mom. I argue with anybody at school, you feel me? So like, it, it like, 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 like one time, I got locked up at school because the officer, he came up to me and shit. And I was late to class, he tried to give me a detention slip. And I said, no, I ain't serving no detention. The fuck? He got upset with me. He was like, sir, it's detention. I said, I'm not serving this detention. And, he, and then he, he gave me a slip like this. Like, imagine, that, imagine this is a slip or a piece of paper. He basically put it to my chest and then he let it go. And so it fell on the ground. The officer said, pick that shit up. I said, I ain't picking that up. And then I walked away, and then he 
came up to me, was like, go pick this up. I said, get out of my face. I said, I told the officer to suck my dick. And then that's when he said, all right. And then he picked me up, him and another officer carried me to the office. They locked me up for sexual harassment to an officer and disorderly conduct. So I think all that stuff, me going crazy at school, me having attitudes reflected, you know what I'm saying? That was just like a version of me at home and I just, it just carried on to school. Oh man, he graduated. That's what a lot of people don't know, that he graduated. I was actually there at his graduation. Back in the day, I felt like me and my stepdad, we had so many problems to where I felt like my mom, she damn near had to choose between her kids and him. And I felt like, shit, my mom chose her husband over her kids. She said it. She told us, me and my brother. Me and my brother was the oldest. And I felt like um, when we was younger, we used to basically get whatever it is we want. Now Marvin, he been in my, my life for since we was down there in diapers. But I felt like when in the beginning, when it was just really me and my brother, we used to get anything we wanted. But like when Marvin came along, it's just like, whatever it is that she, like he wanted, my mom did. You know what I'm saying? She went for it. Me and my brother wanted to do, go here or do this or do this as we got older. And we couldn't because of, he kept saying no. So I felt like my mom relationship, me and my mom relationship growing up, it was really rough. Me and my mom was like this all the time. Like literally fighting. Like me and my mom was fighting. Like it was a couple of times she choked me out. I pushed my mom. I actually called my mom six bitches in a row. And I got locked up. Me and my stepdad, we was fighting all the time, bro. It was crazy as hell. Like when I was growing up in middle school and high school, I got locked up nine times. And like at least four of them times me getting locked up because my because my mom and Marvin called a cops on me. You know what I'm saying? Cause I, I did not want to listen to them. I ran away from home like three times too. Like I was not going, bro. Like, and I don't know, I was just so pissed off. No. I was a real protective mom. My mom used to always be like, oh, uh, you guys is just, I don't want you messing with no fast girls. My mom thought every girl was a fast girl. And which nowadays everybody call fast girl stops. You feel me? He really have much girlfriends. I didn't want my son with, you know, a one beat body, whatever you want to call him, a fast girl, you know? So, <clears throat> cause you know, I was just so protective of my kids, you know? So I did not want them with no fast girl. So, so whatever girlfriends he had, he kind of stuck around and was seeing girls. But he brought one home particular, which I liked her a lot. I liked her a lot. Um, um, actually, he only introduced one girl to me specifically as his girlfriend in that last five years. Now she, she was very nice. Yes. Tina, she was one that I've known very well. They was together for a long time. Um, she was a pretty, pretty sweet chick. Um, she actually was the one who broke my son's heart, devastating me. But she was a real nice person, uh, real sweet, real, real respectful. Uh, she had a little brother. Damon had to been like 18 at the time working at Little Caesars. And he was taking care of her, his girlfriend, and her little brother while the mom just up and moved out of state with her boyfriend. Took the benefits card with her. So he had to, you know, do what he had to do to get money to take take care of his girlfriend and a little brother. But she was really sweet. Um, again, she was, she was one of the only ones that I had a really close relationship with. But she ended up devastating my son. She ended up leaving him out of town. Basically, they were supposed to move out of town to another state and my son quit his job as a manager at Little Caesars. Up and moved out of state with her and I get a call the next day crying saying he slept in his car all night. When he got there, he thinking that it's the brother that's coming to help get the clothes out the car because they're going to move in with the brother in Michigan or Arizona. And instead, the guy comes out and his girlfriend looks at him in the car and says, this is my boyfriend. So my son is stuck in another state with his clothes in the trunk, devastated, lost his job and everything. And so it kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. But she was like, again, she was one of the only ones that I had really got to know a real personal relationship with. First name is Jennifer. Right now I am an administrative assistant at a CPA firm. I conquered cancer. I was an optometric assistant for 15 years. I have three daughters, grandsons, baby on the way. I'm happy. Bianca being my first child, I had her um, at 21. So back then I wasn't with her father. I ended up with another gentleman and we did the best that we could. We, she had everything that she needed. She had everything that we felt that we could give her. And I think that she was a beautiful child. She was very soft-spoken and I'm very blessed to have her as my firstborn. Bianca really didn't have too many like boyfriends. Um, I was only really close to the one that, and he was very respectful. 
Um, Bianca worked a lot. She was keeping her grades. Like she was a cheerleader from fifth grade to her senior year in high school. Well, she made varsity as a senior in high school, but then was not able to do so because she was pregnant. Um, she was in dental school, did phenomenal. It came to her easily and I was very proud of her. She did very well in school. Right now, um, we are literally like best friends. Um, I can go to her for anything. I know she can come to me for anything, but there has been times where we didn't see eye to eye, where we didn't get along. There's actually like a certain time in our life where we weren't talking at all. We went through a lot of stuff together. But right now at this moment, she's literally my best friend and I just love her so much. I mean, I wouldn't trade her for the world. Having daughters was easy for me. I'm quite thankful that I didn't have any boys until my grandsons. I just lived in a house full of girls. We always, we fought every day because that's what girls do. We all got each other's nerves, but at the end of the day, um, again, I wouldn't have trade, traded them for the world because my sisters, like, I feel like if there was a boy in the mixture, everything would have been so different. So I feel like I'm glad that I was raised with all girls and I just love all my sisters. <laughs> she turned 15, like they knew. In our home, we had, I had been, you know, we had five daughters in the home. At that point in time, we had five girls. So Bianca being the firstborn, she knew that she had to get a job if she wanted things. We tried to, at that point in time, teach them that they needed to have responsibilities. If she wanted anything extra other than the basic necessities of life, she had to get a job. She had to pay for half of her car insurance. She had to save money for a car. She had to help with her cell phone. She she wanted makeup, anything extra that I could not provide. She had to get a job. So when she turned 15, the only <laughs> place in Fort Wayne that was hiring was Little Caesars. Mom met Damien. To be honest, I don't even remember. Um, I think the first time she like literally met him though, Damien came over to my house and it was my birthday and he brought me, I think, like balloons, flowers, and like some gifts and stuff. I think that's the first time she ever met him. But they didn't like actually like sit down and like talk. Um, I believe something was wrong with me on my birthday. Like I think my parents didn't buy me something or like I was mad about something. So he basically came over and surprised me. And that was the first time she actually ever seen Damien. Introduced my parents to Bianca. Just, I believe it was the summer she got pregnant. Cause I think that year, that's when we got serious. She stopped playing games. I stopped playing games, and we got serious. And I introduced, I introduced her to, I think my mom first, and I introduced her to my dad next. And then that's when she went on vacation. We went to Kings Island, Coney Island with my parents and stuff. I liked her. Yes, I like Bianca. Um, <clears throat> she was um, real forward. So yeah, that was something I liked about her. Yes. My first impression was no. My first impression was no, um, cause she just looked so young. And then Damon had a really, really pretty girlfriend, Tina. She was pretty. She was pretty, and she broke my son down. So I'm looking at this, this, this Bianca chick with these little pretty little eyes. I'm like, oh no, 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 no. She gonna break you down, son. You already had one do it to you. I mean, I was literally in this ear, like, bro. Mm -mm. No, but uh, turned out to be pretty cool. So my first impression, impression of meeting Damien, um, I remember Bianca being like, Mom, what do you think? I like this boy. He's three years older than I am. And I'm like, no, nope. That's too, you know, that's too many years. I don't approve of it. I want you to live life. Ain't nothing that they want at that age other than something that I don't want to think my child, you know, having or being in a relationship or anything like that. So when I first met him, finally, um, we really, I don't honestly remember like meeting him maybe once other than the time when they said that she was pregnant. I first found out I was pregnant with DJ. I was scared, I guess you would say, because I was 17 years old. And I remember I was at my grandma's house. I was laying down in the bed and I got up and I felt like really, really lightheaded. And I told my mom, I was like, hey mom, I don't feel good. I feel lightheaded, this is what's going on. She's like, are you pregnant? 
Then I texted her back saying, no mom, there's no way I can be pregnant, knowing that I was out here doing what I was doing. But to tell my mom, I was like, no mom, you know, I'm not pregnant. She was like, Bianca, you need to take a test right now or when you get home, you're taking a test. I didn't want to take that test in front of my mom and my dad because I know it would have been way worse than if I took it in front of my grandma. So me and my sister rode our bikes down to the dollar store, grabbed a little cheap pregnancy test, went back to my grandma's house. I took the test and I was so scared to look at it. I remember my cousin and my sister were at the door waiting for me. Um, I looked at the test and it said positive. I started crying immediately. I started screaming, I'm pregnant! Oh my gosh, I'm pregnant! And I texted my mom and said, I'm pregnant. She didn't even text me back. I texted her again, I'm like, hello? She was like, I'm disappointed, that's all I can say. Um, but I was scared, but at the end of the day, you know, he's the love of my life and I wouldn't have changed anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, but she was disappointed. She didn't talk to me for like a while. I was disappointed. Bianca always talked about being a dental hygienist. She took classes. She, again, being the firstborn, she had to lead her sisters into what I felt, you know, like I wanted her to go off to college. I wanted her to, you know, then I wanted her to, you know, like go out and live life. I wanted her to um, just not have to have the thought of like having to raise a child, not have those struggles. So it was very disappointing at first when she told me that she was pregnant because I have struggled with children and I was just wanting even more out then. So I was disappointed. Well, like most parents, me and my son is very close. And as men, you know, first thing I said was not yours. But, you know, I. I seen a look in my son's eye when I said that, and it wasn't a pleasant look either, because it was like, by that time, when I found out she was pregnant, of course, feelings done got involved now. He got feelings for her, she got feelings for him. So he looking at me side-eyed me like, but he don't want to say nothing smart and man, get into it. But I was just like, so I caught the look that he gave me, and I was like, well, I'm, I'm just saying, though, you know, this is the first time that you had a woman pregnant. You was with this other chick for five or six years. She ain't never got pregnant, so this chick gets pregnant all of a sudden. How's that? The math don't work. So I'm asking all kind of questions. Then, you know, after a while, I realized what it was. I was really happy. I was really excited. You know, um, it was hard for me to accept that first because I'm looking at her like, it's this young chick. Chick, you know, and first thing I'm thinking of is my son was already hurt by a woman he was with for a long time. And I'm looking at her like she's definitely a heartbreaker. Mom told me that she didn't like Damien, I guess you'd say. Um, to be honest, I didn't care. I didn't care about what she had to say. I didn't care about what my dad had to say. I didn't care about what anybody had to say because I was, I felt like I was 18 when I moved out the house. Um, I was grown. I feel like I was grown. That's what people say. I was grown. And it was my life. My relationship. He was the father of my like he was a, he's the father of my children now. He was the father of my one child at the time, and it was nothing she could have done. I mean, I you know thought about her feeling obviously because that's my mom. But at the same time, it's like if my mom got with somebody and I didn't like him, she'd probably still be with him because that's who she likes. You know what I'm saying? I can't change the way I feel for somebody, so I didn't really care how she felt to be honest. I wished it was better than what it is and I feel that only time is going to change that. Um, there's been a lot of There's been a lot of things that have happened over the years of them being together that I've had a hard time dealing with. But at the end of the day, I love my daughter and I want her happy and I will respect the decisions that she makes. Um, I care for Damien because he's the father of my grandsons, my first grandsons. He has done a lot for my daughter and I appreciate that part of it. So I'm just hoping that it'll just only get better. They gon' judge us when we came from the bottom We ain't never had enough We was living life rough Now we good, now we straight, now we up Now we good, now we straight, now we up